A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 59, refitting the axle driven pump and checking the wear on the connecting rods. In this clip the chassis is upside down and I've loosely placed the pump in position. I removed the water inlet elbow just to make it easier to get the pump back into position without marking the paint. And in this clip I'm doing just that. With the help of some Loctite 542 I'm screwing the union into position in the pump's body. This fitting is very important, it's the main water inlet to the pump and if the fit of this part is not good and it leaks then it would be a problem. By using some Loctite 542 on the thread it lessens the chance of a leak ever appearing during the lifetime of the locomotive. Bolting the pump in place to the frame stretcher was surprisingly fiddly. After fitting the nut to the bolt, I used the box key underneath to hold it in position while I tightened the bolt at the top. Now it's time to connect it all together. The eccentric from the leading axle drives the pump ram and also the link to the oil pump. And the drive pin is just an ordinary bolt with part of the shank being plain. You must never use any threaded parts on applications like this. It's very important not to do that. If the thread ran full length of this bolt, that would be very bad as a thread does not make a good bearing surface. I finally fitted the pin using a pair of lock nuts and some washers. I used a combination of steel and brass washers, which provided a very good bearing surface for the part that drives the oil pump. In this clip I'm just finishing off tightening the bolts that hold the pump in place. Originally this part was painted red. I'll be scraping off this red paint from the bolt heads once they're all tight. It's time now to touch in the paint. I decided to use black paint for the underside. Originally, as I've just mentioned, it was red. The paint I'm using is an enamel paint and it's from HMG Paints and it is called Satin Black. I find this HMG Satin Black to be really good paint for steam locomotives. They really do look the part. If you look at the wheels though, I painted those in gloss paint. And the reason for that is wheels are generally wiped over with an oily rag so the shiny paint looks good, whereas the chassis of a steam locomotive, and I mean a full-size one, is seldom touched. Maybe it is now with all the preserved lines, but in the days of British Railways, especially in the final days of steam, you were lucky if any of the parts got cleaned. Because the mindset, once it was decided to dispense with steam, was what's the point of wasting time cleaning them if they're going to be scrapped anyway? The paint is satin black as I've just mentioned, but it looks shiny only because it's wet. I'm carefully painting the edges where the red meets the black. I prefer black to be the dominant colour. And after this short painting session, the underside of the chassis is looking quite good. And here is the usual gratuitous shot of the paint drying. Being very careful not to handle the wet paint, I turned the chassis the correct way up. The next part of the job is to examine the wear on the connecting rod bushes. When I fitted the big end bush onto the crank pin, there was a little bit of wear but nowhere near as much wear as I thought there would be. But this was not so with the small end which was really badly worn. The pin that fits in the crosshead was a rattle fit in the small end. The question is though, what's worn the worst, the pin or the bush? You would think the bush would wear more than the pin. And the only way to find that out is to use a micrometer on the pin. This pin is well under size. I can't see this being wear, I just think it was possibly turned that way. This is where the numbers should be for a 5 16th shaft. According to the writing on the micrometer, it's 0 0.3125. And if, like me, you're not very good at numbers, Try the micrometer on a 5 16 drill bit shank. That would probably be about half a thou undersize. This is a piece of steel, so I'm going to use the micrometer on this to find out how thick this is. Half a thou undersize as well, at 0 0.312. When I try this piece of steel in the small end, with plenty of lubrication, it's actually quite a good fit. I was very surprised. While I'm in micrometer mode, I think it's time to measure the small part. This is a quarter of an inch in diameter and it's more or less bang on. This is the bit that fits into the hole in the crosshead. I checked both sides and both of the pins were undersized, so I really do think they were turned that way. I can't see them wearing in such a linear manner. 
This piece of 516 steel though is stainless steel. You can see this because it's really not very magnetic at all. To make the new pins I'm going to use silver steel for two reasons, because it is accurately ground and generally wears better. These are the pair of crosshead front covers, I've put some green silicone rubber over the bearing part. And now I'm going to take them into the outer part of the workshop to give them a coat of etching primer. It's very cold out there, I didn't stay very long. But back in the inner part of the workshop, when it's a bit warmer, I thought I'd have a look at the progress so far. And here you see the chassis, with the smoke box in place on the saddle, and it's starting to take shape now. The engine is now not that far away from a compressed air test, and also, before I actually clad the boiler and mess about with any of the finer details, I think I'll give it a steam test using a gas burner. But that won't be for a few episodes yet, I still have things to make, as well as I still have to fit parts of the chassis to make it work anyway. So that's it for now, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.